My concern is whether or not, are, the, are they correct in their beliefs? And the truth about whether or not they're correct isn't impacted in any way by the number of people who believe something or how passionately they believe it or what they're willing to put up with. Um, there are people who are willing to, to put up with a lot and die, and it doesn't mean that they are dying for a lie. They might be dying for an error. Okay, fair enough. So let me build on that. And so we'll go back to the story of the apostles. And if you take a look at the apostles, uh, initially Peter had denied Jesus three times. The apostles were in hiding. And if they had not seen Jesus, they wouldn't have come out of hiding. There have been many traditions, and there have also been documents of the apostles and others, early Christians such as Stephen, dying gory deaths. Uh, and others have seen Jesus. People saw Jesus rise. Excuse me. People had seen Jesus rise, and had they not seen him rise, they wouldn't have been so brave. Somebody saw so Jesus. Somebody saw Jesus rise. They, how many Buddhists saw anything? How many? How many Muslims saw anything? The early apostles actually saw something, and that's what made them so brave. So, first of all, you're saying the only reason they would have come out of hiding is if they'd seen Jesus. I don't know how you reach that conclusion. Second of all, you said exactly. Why else would they have come out of hiding? Well, that's an argument from ignorance fallacy. You don't get just. No, to, it's you, not. No, yeah. it's not an argument from ignorance. Yes, it Think is. It. Yes, it is. Stephanie, do you, no, Stephanie, it's if you're claiming hiding because they had seen something, it's Stephanie, very, very clear. Why? Oh my God, so Stephanie, you claimed the only reason they would come out is if they'd seen Jesus, and you're, you're, yes. and you're. When I asked you why, what your justification for that was, you literally said, "Why else would they come out?" That is by it's definition. That is by it's definition, by definition, an argument from ignorance fallacy. Fallacy, fallacy. The only fallacy you should do. You, be do you about care about? Do you fallacy. care about logical fallacies? Do you care about making a sound? No, the logical argument? fallacy is the, the cognitive dissonance you must be having when you don't realize why the apostles got so brave. Stephanie, that's it's what my weird. question. Do you do you care? Do you understand that a fallacious argument cannot be demonstrated to be correct? That that is what a fallacy is. You can try to you can try to uh, capture this as if it's a fallacy. This is not a fallacy. Uh, so it's first of all, it is, but that's not my question, Jesus. Stephanie. And that's how Stephanie. we're able to convince millions of people. To Are you capable of answering the, the actual question? Are you capable of answering the actual question I asked instead of going on defensive and redirecting to something else? No, because you're 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 not right you're now. not it's capable of doing that. You're not capable of actually you answering. You are redirecting, the... Matt. I'm not redirecting. I'm asking yes, you. Yes, you are. I asked. I, all right, your ass is on hold so that you don't talk over me. I will take you off in just a moment. All I've asked that I'd like an answer to is: Do you understand that a logically fallacious argument cannot be demonstrated to be true? Doesn't mean it's not that the conclusion isn't true. It just means that you have no good reason to. Relevant to, to the current to, question. You were still talking to. I'm the one it's who. It's not relevant to the current issue. It's not a logically fallacious argument. Stephanie, I'm asking a question. I you can say it's not relevant all you want, but it's my show, it's and not. I'm asking it. You're trying to shift the goalposts there, Matt. No, I'm trying to find out if I'm talking to someone who is willing to base arguments in reason, or if they're just going to make assertions and dismiss fallacies. Matt, you're not making any sense. Think about this. The apostles were in hiding. They feared for their lives. Why do you think they came out? Maybe they got Why hungry. Do you think they were so brave. <laughs> Peter was hung upside down. Why do you think Paul was so brave? I already, I already explained. On the road Stephanie, to Damascus, he would not Stephanie, have been so brave, and he wouldn't have written Stephanie, any six of the New Testament books. Stephanie, How do you know any of this? I already explained that I'm fine with the idea that they were sincerely convinced they were correct. What I asked was. Do you understand that an argument that is logically fallacious, the conclusion cannot be considered reasonably to be true? You're trying to wrap my If you don't answer my question, I swear fallacious. I will hang up on you because you are wasting time. Of course I'm wasting time. Not anymore, you're not. <laughs> not anymore. This is one of the common questions that we that I get when I'm traveling around and people talk about, you know, how do you engage with believers? What do you do when someone refuses to accept reason as a foundation? That's what you do. You set aside the entire topic of discussion because Jesus is irrelevant to logic. The specifics of any argument for something uh, is irrelevant with respect to whether or not we begin with a foundation of reason. There is a there is incredibly, the, the, the reason that we begin with an understanding of let's not make fallacious arguments is because 
there's a logical structure, a syllogistic structure. And we, there are 256 different ones, which Aristotle and his band of merry logicians went through and analyzed to show that of these 256, these particular structures are such that a true premise necessarily leads to a, con a true conclusion. All men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is immortal. That structure, no matter what you put in there, as long as your premises are true, the structure guarantees that your conclusion is true. And more accurately, if you accept the premises, you must accept the conclusion, otherwise you are by definition being irrational. You are just denying the conclusion. The structure of the argument goes to its validity. The content of the argument goes to whether or not it's sound. And so if the, if the, you could have an argument that is valid in structure, but if you plug in a premise that isn't true, then you have no reason to think that your conclusion is true. Okay? And so if your premise is the only reason, or your conclusion is the only reason they would come out of hiding was because they saw the risen Jesus, um, in, a, in a discussion about why they did certain things, all, you're not even making an argument, you're just making an assertion. And when I try to point this out and you say, well, what other reason could there be? That is by definition a fallacy. That is, hey, I th the butler did it. Well, what evidence do you have that the butler did it? Well, who else could have done it? <laughs> that is the fallacy that Stephanie's engaged in. And my only reason for addressing that was so that we could actually talk about the content that we perhaps disagree on. But it, Stephanie begins with this idea of there were these people who believed and they were willing to die for their beliefs, and the only thing that would make them come out of hiding was if they actually saw the risen Jesus. That is a bald assertion that you have no evidence. Well, it's common sense. Well, I, it's common sense to you, but that's because you don't understand the importance of avoiding fallacious reasoning. Your common sense is flawed. You have been duped into thinking things are reasonable when they're not. Reasonableness is demonstrated, not asserted.